This is the first of three videos that will help teach you how to make solutions and dilutions um, as part of Lab 2. You should use this video in conjunction with the Lab 2 uh, slides that I provided, the lecture slides under the Lab folder, and also in conjunction with the Lab 2 pre-lab. If you find that you're reading through the Lab 2 pre-lab and you find these techniques very confusing, then consult these narrations and try again. You can always, of course, come and find me, and I will work through the problems with you as well. Now, making solutions is a very important, actually a marketable skill. If you ever work in a lab in any capacity, you'll probably be asked to make solutions, and you need to be able to do so correctly. This lab is going to teach you three different techniques for making solutions. And this first technique teaches you how to make a solution using a dry powder, a dry solute. Okay, so let's get into it. First, let's define what a solution is and what concentration is. So as it says here, a solution is a combination of two chemicals such that one chemical, which we call the solute, is dissolved by the other chemical, which we call the solvent. Now you make solutions at home all the time. If you make coffee or tea or Gatorade, that's a solution. The Gatorade powder is the solute and the solvent is water because the water dissolves the Gatorade. In biological systems such as cells, water is almost always the solvent. So we're going to work with water in the lab and you need to know how much powder and how much uh, water to add to make solutions of particular concentrations. So that begs the question, what is concentration? Concentration describes how strong the chemical is. It describes how much solute is in that solution compared to the amount of solvent. Obviously, the more Gatorade powder you put into Gatorade, the stronger the flavor is going to be and the brighter the color will be the higher its concentration of Gatorade will be. If you just put a little tiny bit in there, it's not going to be very concentrated because there's going to be a lot of water compared to the amount of Gatorade. All right. Now, the next thing you need to understand about concentration is the relationship between these things we call moles and grams, which we discussed in the metric system uh, lecture. So a mole is kind of a, it's a weird unit of measurement that's used in chemistry labs. And a mole, it expresses the number of molecules of a particular substance that you have in an area. So it's a tricky one because moles can't be directly measured, but they can be calculated. So it's a little bit strange. Um, some students have difficulty with it. Here's what you need to know for, about moles for our class. You need to know that one mole of a chemical is equal to its formula weight, which we can measure in grams. So one mole is equivalent to a certain mass of that chemical. Now what's the formula weight? Well, the formula weight is the sum of all the atoms in a molecule of that particular substance. So if you took a molecule of a substance and you notice that it's made of several different atoms, if you add up the atomic masses of each of the atoms in that molecule, you'll have the mass of that particular molecule, and that we call the formula weight. Now this can be calculated pretty easily by um, finding the atomic masses for all of the atoms and just adding them up. But most of the time in this class, you will be provided with the formula weight in grams. Grams, or you could think of it grams per mole. All right, so that's moles, which is kind of a measurement of mass. What is molarity? We're also going to work with molarity in this lab. Well, molarity is a measurement of concentration. It's a way of expressing how concentrated a solution is, and it uses moles. A one molar solution is the same as one mole of a substance in one liter of solution. So you can see that here. 
a one molar solution is one mole in one liter of solution. Molarity is expressed with the uh, abbreviation big M. So if you see a big capital M, that's molarity. That's not meters, that's molarity. Okay. So let's talk about how this relates to grams. If a one molar solution is equivalent to one mole of a substance in one liter of solution, and a mole of a substance is equal to the formula weight in grams, then we can say that a one molar solution is equivalent to the formula weight in grams of a substance in one liter of solution. So for instance, let's say that you're given that the formula weight of salt, sodium chloride, is 58.5 grams per mole, 58.5 grams. You then know that a one molar solution of salt means that there's 58.5 grams of salt in one liter of solution. Okay. The higher the molarity, the more concentrated a solution is. So a two molar solution would have twice as many grams of salt in it. It would be twice as concentrated as a one molar solution. All right, so given that information, next let's learn how to use a dry solute, a powdered solid, to make a particular solution of a particular concentration. It's really pretty simple. What you need to remember when you're presented with problems such as these is this big formula. Okay. Let's say that I've given you a problem such as this. Make 200 mils of a 0.5 molar salt solution and I've given you the formula weight for that salt. How do you figure up how much salt to use? Okay, let's look at the formula. The grams to use is equal to grams over moles times moles over liters times liters. What the heck does that mean? All right, well, here's how I think of this formula. I kind of simplify it in my brain. The grams I want to use is equal to the formula weight of that chemical, that's the grams per moles part, times the molarity, that's how strong I want the solution to be, how concentrated I want it to be, and that's this part expressed moles per liter, times liters. Liters is the volume, that's how much I want to make. So this solution, this uh, formula is actually pretty simple. The grams to use is equal to the formula weight of the chemical, times how concentrated I want it to be, times how much I want to make. All right, now I want to point out a couple of things about this formula before we use it. Let's look at the units that are involved here. Because of the way this is set up, when you multiply these three numbers together, look what happens to the units. The moles cancel out, because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator, and so do the liters. So at the end of this problem, the only unit you're left with is good old grams. And that's what you want to know. You want to know how much powder to use okay, to make your solution. One other thing that you should know about this formula in terms of units before you use it. The units you use must be in grams, molar, and or liters. So if you have a number that is expressed in millimolar, milligrams, milliliters, or in micro of any of these, you're going to have to do some converting in order to get them into grams, molar, or liters. If you don't make those conversions, your decimal point is going to be in the wrong place and you're going to use the wrong amount of chemical. Okay, and I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. All right, so let's look back at this problem. Make 200 mils of a 0.5 molar NaCl solution, and you're given the formula weight is 58.5 grams per mole. Let's put these numbers into our formula. All right, so grams to use equals my formula weight. That's easy, 58.5 
No converting needed there. My molarity is next. Molarity I'm given is already in molar, 0.5. So I can just put that straight into the formula. 0 0.5 moles per liter. Now let's take a look at the volume, the liters here. I'm asked to make 200 mils. Milliliters is not liters. So since that little m is there, I know I'm going to need to convert this 200 mils into liters. And so that's what I've done down here. 200 mils is equivalent to 0 0.2 liters. So I had to put that in as 0.2. Again, if I didn't make that conversion, my decimal point would be in the wrong place. I'm going to use the wrong number of grams. Right now, at this point, all I have to do is multiply these three numbers together. And there we go. After I do this multiplication, I find out that I'm going to need 5.85 grams of salt to make the solution I want. Now, I've done the math. How do I actually make the solution? Okay. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to measure out your salt. In this case, I'm going to measure out 5.85 grams of my salt. I'm going to put that into some kind of container. And to that salt, I'm going to add water. And I'm going to add about half the final volume of water. So in this problem, I wanted to make 200 mils. I'm going to add about 100 mils of water to the container and mix it. This just gets it started dissolving. Um, before you're up to your final volume, okay? Now, I've got it kind of mixed up. Next, I'm going to put this solution into a graduated cylinder. I'm gonna put the graduated cylinder on a desk, as this kid is doing here, and I'm gonna add water to it until it gets up to the final volume. So I'm gonna carefully add water to this until it gets up to 200 mils. Then I'm gonna mix it again, and I'm done. Now, why did I do it this way? Well, instinctively, students want to take the dry solute, the salt, and they want to add the final volume of water to it. And that's a mistake. So picture this. Had I put my salt into um, this flask here, and I added to it 200 mils of water, because I want to make 200 mils of solution, if I'd done that, I would end up with too much solution, and it would be too dilute. I added too much water. You have to take the volume of the dry solute into account when you do this kind of solution preparation. Or, again, you'll end up with too much solution. So, very simply, don't worry about calculating the amount of water you need. Just put it into the graduated cylinder, add water until you get to the final volume, and then mix it one more time. And you're done. All right, so that's the basic technique for making solutions with a dry solute. At this point, I would like you to pause the video, give this problem a try, and let's see what you get. Okay, so go ahead and pause. All right, let's see what you ended up with. Here's the problem. Make 75 mils of a 200 millimolar salt solution, and you're given the formula weight of salt. Here's how I would do this problem. All right, first of all, formula weight. That can go directly into the problem. Now, let's look at concentration. Here, my concentration is in millimolar. And as I told you, it needs to be in molar. So I've converted 200 millimolar into 0.2 molar, which is expressed moles per liter here. I need to do a conversion on my volume as well. 75 mils is not in liters, that's in mils. So 75 mils is equivalent to 0 0.075 liters. So I made that conversion, put the number in. OK, so there's the two that I converted. This one, I left the way it was. Now, when I do all of this nice multiplying, that tells me that I'm going to need to use 0 
grams of salt um, to make my solution. And the number of decimal places you want to count here, it kind of depends on the uh, measuring equipment you have in the lab. If your balance will go down to four decimal places, then go down to four decimal places. If not, then you're going to have to do some rounding on this number. All right, so hopefully you were successful in the skill and that clears that up a little bit. Now you can go to your pre-lab for lab two and you can complete pages one through three. The next lecture is going to be about making solutions using a technique called parallel dilutions. So if you need some help with that, be sure and consult the narrated video for that. Thank you very much for your time and best of luck with this lab.